How long do you think we've got until my volunteer arrives? I don't know. But I will say I'm in the car park. There are cars around me that probably have drivers in. But I have continued to listen to The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. When I spoke to you yesterday with regards to Dr. Thorne, I'd actually already started reading The Woman in White again. However, I was unsure if I will continue simply because, for whatever reason, as intrigued as I am by the story, I find it confusing. And last week when I came to you and I said that I wasn't able to take the information in, I'm still not quite sure what's going on. And I'm now about 200 pages through. I listened to it on the way to work. I had to go and get petrol for the first time since anyone mentioned a certain crisis a few weeks back. Oh, there's people here now. They're gonna wanna drop off donations. Ah, uh, it's a German lady. And she always comes and she donates stuff to me that's actually not fit for purpose. And she sa says to me, I saw you. The German lady, oh, let's just, do you know what? Before we go into talking about the woman in white, let's talk about why it's now Tuesday and I've not had the opportunity to come and chat to you and tell you my thoughts on where I am in the woman in white. So, yesterday, it's like a Land Rover pickup pulls up into our car park. This has happened before and I got there to work a few weeks ago and this person was lying in wait. Firstly, last time she was there, she'd parked in the spaces that are for the funeral directors next door. I know, Age UK, near a funeral directors. If you fail in one, you can always pop across to the other, that sort of thing. Well, this time they've got their cones out saying you're not allowed to park there. Fine. So she parks in another parking space. It's a daughter. A daughter's parking there to take her son to school. Firstly, private car park, not for you to go and toddle off into town. So I get out of my car, I go and unlock, unlock the shop, and she starts with her old thing of, I saw you, I knew you'd be it. Right, firstly, I'm here to record in my car, so you're actually ruining my day here, missus. I've just been to put petrol in, and what would usually fill it at £40 no longer fills my car because of the rising cost of fuel. So I'm not in a particularly good mood, Chuck. And then she says to me, about this man who's pulled up, parked next to me, and then he's just gone off to do whatever. And I said to her, he actually works upstairs. All these cars here work upstairs. And she's lucky she didn't get a trouser-based mouthful. Anyway, if you understand and have seen Dinner Ladies, you'll get that reference. Then she tells me she's got a cold. Well, then I step feet away from her. Because I'm not taking any risks. You can tell me you've got a cold. Ever since they changed the rules and I can start taking donations off people at the door, that's fine. But don't come to me and tell me you've got a cold. It was one supermarket carrier bag full of stuff that was for the bin anyway. Could you not have waited until you'd got rid of the cold? If indeed a cold it is you got? Did you have to interrupt the only time I had today to record? I tell you, my volunteer turned up a few minutes after this and she had to bear the brunt of it because I was annoyed. Especially when I've been talking about the woman in white, which is annoying me anyway. Let's talk about the woman in white by Wilkie Collins. If I had to hold this up against the law and the lady, this would lose. I am lost. I am now 300 pages in, so I've read another 100 pages since I last spoke to you. We're at page 307. I was going to wait until I got to the end of the chapter before finishing reading this yesterday, but I just, ugh. I want to finish it quickly because I'm not enjoying it, if that makes sense to anybody else. I want to have it read because I want to see what all the fuss is about, but I find myself lost. And also, we're on to a female narrator now. And do you want to know how Wilkie Collins differentiates between his male and his female narrators? The female narrators cry more. It's tears. That's literally 
the one thing that Wilkie Collins has to differentiate between his women. We already know that one of the women in this book talks about how um, they despise their own sex. And now we've got another woman who... Ugh, Wilkie Collins has an idea over what a woman ought to be. And... Yes, it's once again contextually teaching me about the thoughts that people had towards women of the time. And I suppose I should not bring modern sensibilities into the reading of it, but I find it so irksome, especially after I've just read Dr Thorne and everything that happened there. I've also no idea who this woman in white is. Quite honestly, I'm hoping she's a spectre of death and just kills them all off. I've also no idea why we've had to have more than one narrator, because they all have the same voice. That's what I mean when I say about him differentiating between the men and women. It's just that the women cry. The men stand there and are just a few pints short of alcoholism, if I'm being honest. I've no idea what they're talking about when they're talking about the marriage and contracts. I don't understand why legality has to come into it at all because it's supposed to have something gothic about it. The best thing I have noticed is the few things that Diane Setterfield must have referenced in the 13th tale and now I'm getting where she got that reference from. And it's a fast read which is fine but it's not as good as Anthony Trollope. And so I'm reading it and, and I understand maybe well, no, I, I can compare the two. As a reader, I'm allowed to have my make my own decisions about how I choose to read, rate and rank things. And right now, Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White, is ranking below The Law and the Lady, which I read last year, um, and Anthony Trollope. Anthony Trollope writes so fantastically, keeps you engaged and is able to make you angry for the right reasons. Angry because of what is going on in the story, angry because of the beliefs of certain characters. Here my anger comes from the fact that I just end up feeling lost the entire time. I'm finding, I find it very easy to zone out of this book and Wilkie Collins goes all round the houses to tell his story. I'm hoping to finish this tomorrow. Um, I have 318 pages, no, 314 pages left of this one. The Woman in White is a book in which stuff happens at a place called Limeridge House. It's a bit melodramatic and so far... I found probably the first 60 pages engaging and interesting. The next 200 pages weren't really up to par. There was one paragraph that was mildly mysterious. And now I've had another 30 pages of people debating signing a contract. Week two of October is going fantastically. Do you ever feel great relief at having finished a story? A novel? And it's not because you wished to complete the novel. It is because it has bored you so much that you are happy to be done with it. Because that is the case with The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. On Tuesday, I decided that I needed to finish this book. Because it is a tale I wanted to have read, I wanted to consume, yet I cannot help but think of this as one of the most tedious novels I have ever had the misfortune to read. It was like The Haunted Hotel all over again in that that book also bored me and it shouldn't have done because there is so much within this novel that other writers have done that I enjoy. I like tales that are stories within stories. Here we have multiple narrators doing the whole stories within stories thing but my biggest issue comes from the fact that all of these characters have the same narratorial voice. 
I don't like Wuthering Heights. Well, at least in Wuthering Heights, there is some variation on tone between the different narrators. We don't have that here. In the 647 pages I have read, I only felt any sort of excitement in about 60 of them. The first 60 pages, great. Then, 200 pages later, there's a paragraph I enjoyed. About 300 pages after that, there was another bit I enjoyed. <sighs> But overall, this book is just a bore and a slog to get through, and that is not what I anticipated. It also becomes incredibly repetitive. So I don't know whether at the time it would have been predictable, but you get told what the narrator believes to have happened based on the things he has learned. We've got a bit of a detective story going on, not just revolving around The Woman in White. The Woman in White, great title, but really has little importance to the overall narrative here. And 647 pages is actually quite bloated. I think that had this book been 300 pages, you could have had the same effect. Well, no, you don't want the same effect. You don't want the same effect. You want a better effect. You could have actually allowed the thrilling element to continue. Um, we meet the woman in white, we discover who the woman in white is. Uh, it's related to this family who somehow, through great coincidences, Walter Hartwright ends up embroiled with, and then he has a bit of affection towards somebody, but then that goes funny. And so he becomes embroiled based on the affection he feels to one of the women. And from the page 100 point of this, whilst I was listening to the audiobook, I felt a bit lost, so I ended up reading the physical copy then. And I did a blend of reading this going back to the audiobook just because I listened to the audiobook on the way to work. Around about page 300, if not just a bit later, Walter tells you what he thinks happened. And you've got all these different narratives coming around to tell you the story. But unfortunately, the final 200 pages, you just spend a lot of time repeating yourself. You know, a paragraph upon paragraph where Walter will say something along the lines of, I need not bore the reader with such and such. But you're boring me, mate. I am bored. Please just stick to, like, there are some really big thrilling scenes within this tale. Great scenes that go and give this whole gothic sense. And there were points, there were points within this book where I was like, I wonder whether this inspired Agatha Christie. And there are points where I say that I could tell Diane Setterfield had been inspired based on reading her book, The Thirteenth Tale. And I could see that, and I appreciated reading this to get those references. But as an actual physical book, I am so pleased to have read it, have it done, and never have to read it again. Also, this means that two out of three of the Wilkie Collins books that I have read... I have not liked. I now have the Moonstone, Armadale, and poor Miss Finch to read. And I'm going to have another case of two out of three of them, which will then mean that two... What will it be? That'll mean that I've read two books that I've liked and four books that I've disliked. And I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case. I'm hoping that... I I will end up actually finding more Wilkie Collins that I like that will remind me of the lore and the lady. And also another thing that Wilkie Collins does is that he um, so often will give you very grotesque ideas of who the villains are. So um, I know there's this conversation at the moment about villainy and how it's presented to um, viewers or consumers. And in the lore and the lady, the villain in that um is described as such a manner that you know that they're the villain. Count Fosco in here is described as this fattest man that has ever been seen. And, you know, I think that clearly sensibilities were somewhat different in Victorian times and it is flaunting his affluence and his arrogance to be this huge... But, you know, remind people that sometimes there's a bit of fat phobia in Victorian literature here. Oh, but my Christ, my Christ, this book is predictable because Walter will tell you what he thinks has happened. He'll tell you what's happened. And then 200 pages later, you've got to listen to somebody else tell you what's happened from their perspective. And oh, it's just tedious. 
Ugh. Wilkie Collins, again, reminds me that he's not very good at writing women, and that the only reason that we can possibly like Marion is because she has the sensibilities of a man. But, you know, I know that this is telling of the time. As I said the other day, the only way that Wilkie Collins seems able to differ differentiate between men and women is that he has the women cry when they're narrators. I do not like this book. And I am not sure whether I will be reading The Moonstone or listening to it this month because I think I need to take some time away from Wilkie Collins because, my Christ, this book was overly long and, Lord, the only redeeming qualities were a particular fire that happened and um, something that happened to the villain in the end because at least that's one of the things about Victorian literature. Sometimes villains get their retribution in ways we did not expect. <sighs> yes, I threw the book. It will be going to the charity shop tomorrow. And may the woman in white never darken my doorstep again. Also, this is clearly my fault, because I said on Sunday, what should I read next? And Emily of Novel Novels said, Bully Cows by Charles Dickens. And maybe I would have had more fun if I'd stuck to reading a bit of Dickens. So I think this might be the next book I move on to. Um, I downloaded the audiobook so I can listen to this on my way to work now. But I have also downloaded the all-cast version of Dracula, because I think that that'll be nice to listen to as well. Two weeks in... Two books done for Victober. One hit and one miss. And I do have to say, when it comes to The Woman in White, I do wonder whether the time in which I've read it has also proven to be unfortunate for it because I had just read Dr Thorne and I so thoroughly enjoyed that. Despite the fact that I got so angry at the characters, um, I enjoyed the writing of it and I felt it such a clean experience and what I mean about that is it just it was a pleasure to go and read that book because I didn't get lost and I thought that Trollope was this very witty insightful character who despite some of the opinions of the time that end up permeating the narrative it with this one Whilst I felt sorry for Mary Thorne, she had time to bite back and that happened. Whereas in The Woman in White, the women are only seen as worthy when they're taking on the more masculine roles and um, betraying their gender slash sex. Underlining that, I do think that Collins does show something that we ought to consider which is how the male characters within this novel were able to control the women in such a way that if they did anything wrong they would just throw them in an asylum somewhere and that would solve all their troubles and I think that if we were looking at how gender really defined a country and a time period and how gender roles were so specific and so ruling of society at the time, then The Woman in White is also a good book to look at and consider that. It does have some merits, um, but for me, I did find the overall narrative and the way the story was told lacking and tedious, but in terms of the actual things that are happening and the things that are being discussed in the novel, I thought that that was quite good in terms of getting more of an idea of what was going on in society at the time and the way in which women were treated by men. I thought it was poorly executed, but it had a lot of interesting stuff that I just wish had been more focused on. And had the book been shorter, I think that it would have been a more pleasurable experience. It would have been more focused and... Yeah, I can understand why, for many others, it's a favourite. I think I'm going to end the vlog here, which is Thursday afternoon, <laughs> the 14th of October. 
and I don't know when I'll vlog again, but if I do, I'll probably be reading Bleak House or Framley Parsonage. If you've read The Woman in White and would like to discuss it, then please feel free to do so in the comments. If Even if your opinion differs to mine, let's let's open up that discussion. As long as we're respectful to one another, that's all right in my book. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.